meeting. Um, we are live streaming via our YouTube channel, channel even, and uh, Becky will be um, tweeting as we go along. Trust you all know what that means. Fantastic. Um, will all participants at the Town Council and staff please mute yourself until I ask you to speak. Please use the electronic blue or yellow hand to ask a question. It could be a yellow hand at the bottom of your screen found by pressing the reactions button. And for councillors present in the chamber, please rain, raise your orange voting card or your hands in this case. Um, the votes will be recorded by Paul. Um, I'm going to try and manage this. You may not pick this up or you may pick this up. This is my first time chairing this particular meeting. So um, it may be that I have to get really bossy and end the discussion if we're running out of time, but I'll try not to. Obviously, we need a certain amount of business to get done in, in the time allotted. Um, how many attendees do we have registered, Rachel? Do you know at the moment your external to us here? Five. Okay, five. Well, everyone is very welcome. I can't see you, but thank you very much for joining us. Um, can I ask if you have any questions, if you can pose them through the question and answer board? And um, Rachel and Becky will be monitoring that and um, we'll patch you through when we're ready to hear you speak, if that's what you want to do. Um, we'll also try and manage this and we'll moderate questions. For those of you in the room, please raise your hand in the normal way. Okay, I think we're ready to move on now. So the first item on the agenda is apologies for absence. Yep, we have apologies from Lizzie Boyle and Steve Tanner. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, um, any declaration of councillors' interests? Um, have any councillors present in the room got any um, issues they'd like to declare an interest in? Rich. Uh, I forget which agenda item it is, but the one about grants. Okay, it's the last one. Thank you very much. That's number seven on the agenda. Thank you. And um, I said Scott is going to hand up. Uh, yeah, I'm a trustee for the Friends of the Mount Martin and Keyford Community Charity. Thank you, Scott. Anyone else? Um, that is Ali. Ali. Um, I'm a director of Fair Housing for Froome, which has got a grant application. That's an item seven. Thank you. Um, anyone else? I'm trying to move between my screen and I can see a hand waving there. I think. That Anita. is top left. Anita. Anita, sorry, Anita, I can't see you on my screen. Welcome. Thanks, Nick. That uh, I'm also director of Fair Housing for Froom. Okay. Is that everyone? I think it is. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, if we now move to approval of the minutes from the last meeting on the 21st of April, 2021. I guess everyone has um, had a chance to have a look at those online. Can I just check that everyone's happy that they're an accurate record of that meeting? No issues. Okay, um, then can I have someone to propose um, Sarah and seconded by Maxine? And all those in favor now, please. Uh, anyone not anyone uh, voting not voting in support of that or absent? Uh, Sheila, I didn't see your hand up previously. Are you? Oh, she's not a committee member, of course. Thank you. Pardon. Thank you. Pardon. Thank you. Uh, Anne's got that hand up. Anne, are you voting against? No. Hand down. <laughs> okay. Right. Thank you very much. Okay, um, have we got any questions or comments from the public first? This is all yes. we go, one second please. We normally go the other way around, we normally go with councillors first, but um, what we'd like to do is hear from the public who've come here to either in present or who are online. So yes, please, what is your question? Jill, isn't it? 
It is Jill. I'm yes. Jill. I'm going to bring up the old chestnut of the open space in Foundry Barton regarding um, the general maintenance. The grass is being cut and kept tidy. Um, but there are a few issues on the boundaries of that um, open space site. The brambles are growing very fast now, as they would at this time of year. And there are um, some hedging, which is adjoining a neighbor's front garden, which she is cutting back because they are in, in sort of intruding into her front garden. Um, also, um, Rosie Gosling and myself, we have taken to planting in that open space on spare earth, which the council have not done anything to. So we have been putting our own planting in yeah. there and we are watering and maintaining it. And I haven't informed- Kate's responded and I can't do anything about it. I haven't, I haven't informed Chris Stringer on this, but I will email him and tell him what I've said to you tonight. Okay. Um, there's an ash tree there and Andy, our new mayor was in that open space when I was, and it has got ash dye back. He took a photograph of it and said he would report it either to town council or Chris Stringer, and um, it needs it needs attention, and it definitely has got a problem. Um, I think that's all regarding the that the open space. Obviously, the wildflowers growing in in amongst the new trees behind the metal fence. I mean, they will be cut back in July, like most like sort of wildflower meadow situation is, yeah. Um, now then, another subject is the co-op shop and post office. Um, I was wondering if you could confirm or deny the fact whether Royal Mail is taking over that shop. Okay, is that, have you got a third item? No. Okay, can I just, first of all, first of all, thank you for what you're doing. We have planted hydrangeas and we have planted perennials and we know we just hope that you know when we are unable to because they're both old mm -hmm. uh, unable to look after it someone else might do it you know or whether the town council could continue to maintain it um i don't know but it's a pity that they haven't included all of that area yeah i mean i I guess you know probably better than I do some of the challenges we face. And I know Chris Stringer and his team do an awful lot of work around the town. And yeah. the most successful projects are quite often those where the community get involved and yeah. do it themselves. I appreciate it. you may not feel like doing that forever. It'd be great if we could find someone else in the community to get involved in it. Yeah. The thing about the ash, you say Andy's already got a photo and he sent it. Yes, he did. Project. He took a photo and posted and sent it. Yeah. So it'd be, uh, we could it needs to, it, no, that ash tree needs to come down. Okay. Well, well, Chris will have got that and you know, he's Hopefully. very dynamic. Yeah. Come and have a look at it and make an assessment of the rest of the area. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Oh, I just thought of something else. Come on then. <gasps> Same subject or a third? Uh, a third one. Okay. Can, right. we just, can we just come to the second come, point? Come to the shop. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Peter, can I, Peter Wheelhouse, can I ask you please if you would mind responding to the question regarding the co op and the post office situation? Yes, yeah, so we're, we're working with the landlords, uh, Maybrook and others to try and find a solution and ensure that, that that post office operation can continue. I'm not able to say any more than that, unfortunately, but uh, certainly it's something that we're working on with, with the landlord. Thank you, Peter. Can I, can, can I interject there? At the back of the shop, there's a notice. There's a public notice displaying the fact that, sorry to cause any inconvenience to customers, due to the temporary closure of the post office. Now, I'm hanging on that word temporary, and I just wondered if Royal Mail um, had, was in favour of opening up as a post office. Peter, would you like to respond to that? Well, we understand that Royal Mail, sorry, the post office have, have been advertising <coughs> the opportunity for somebody to... Um, to take on that post office counter. Uh, and uh, as I say, the, the, the landlord of the property is uh, uh, working with um, the post office to, to try and find a, a solution to that. Uh, I, the, there's nothing more to, to, uh, to say at the moment, I'm afraid. 
Thank you, Peter. Yeah, can yeah, I, say I, that? I do understand that, but you know, with the townspeople cannot go to Portway or Froomefield. Can, can I say, as one of the multiple yeah. councillors, as long as yeah. Mark, we know how important that yeah. stuff is in absolutely. To, to the absolutely. people. And I know Peter is doing his very best. Yeah, the okay. landlords are working, so right. everything that can be done, I think. Yeah, it. right. Okay, Accept, accepted. The third better. item was. Was there any money left over from the Foundry Barton money that was left from Persimmon and Barrett from the, when the development was finished? We were allocated, you know, a lump sum. I don't know, but maybe somebody else. But whether it's all gone or whether it's gone into a, into a multi-pot, I don't know. Off the top of my head, Jill, I don't know, but you're right, there, there was an amount reserved for it. Yeah. Um, I, I can check that. Um, so do you know the other? There's still some. There is some. There's still some money left. Right, could it be spent on doing the extra work there then, do you think? Can, um, I'll, I'll talk to Chris Stringer. Chris Stringer, yeah, right, thank you. Right. Thank you. Very right, nice. thank you. Have you got anything else to add to anything? Just want to pass the microphone. Yeah. Are you Margaret or? Sue. Sue, sorry, Sue. <laughs> sorry, Sue. Sorry, sorry. 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 Um, just because of COVID last year, I, and I was very poorly as well. Um, but I'd like to thank you for my card you sent me. You no, know, very grateful. <laughs> and I do go along the meadow quite a lot, lot of meadow. And I see there's a lot more seats along there now, you know, both sides, which is brilliant. So I walk along there quite a lot. So thank you very much for putting that there. Thank you. Okay. Thanks very much indeed. I'll leave that back to Chris. Yeah. That's great. Our public space is lovely at the moment. Um, right. Were there any other um, questions, Rachel, from anyone? Any other attendees? Members of the public? Okay. Um, Froom Town Councillors, anything from uh, fellow Froom Town Councillors? Um, and do we have any district or county councillors with us tonight? That's a shame. Okay. okay. Um, I think we can then uh, move on from item two to item three. Um, I'd like to welcome Julie Reader Sullivan. I hope I've pronounced that the right way, Julie, who is Commendit's Head of Service for Planning and Growth. And uh, Julie, you're very welcome. And you're going to talk to us about your work, Mendit's work on supporting economic development. Yes, thank you. I will switch my video on, but if my if if the sound starts to go strange, just can somebody tell me, and I will take it off again. So, good evening, everyone. Um, Laura, I think is going to share some slides for me, and um, I'll run through these. I'm aware of my time, so I will. Oh, I will do the um, ten minutes and hopefully that will be helpful. In that 10 minutes, I very briefly cover what's on this opening slide. I will reduce the amount of time I spent talking about the um, economic situation that we're all in um, and move forward to talk about the items on, on that uh, agenda. So we'll move on to the next page and I'm happy obviously to take questions at the end. So in summary, rather than talking through this, we can see um, the rise in um, claimants that we would expect given um, the crisis that we've been through over the last year. Um, and you can see that uh, Mendip has a significant increase since last March. You can see we're at 2.3 in March 2020 and in 2021 we were at 5.3. So significant increase and worth bearing in mind. Having said that, you'll also probably all now be aware that the hospitality industry are currently struggling to recruit. So we're also doing some work in that area. Next slide, please, Laura. Um, this is just a reflection from a business survey we did last year, um, which you know, shows a lot of concerns that um, only 30% of businesses at that point felt that they were able to survive beyond summer 2021 without further support. However, that further support was then provided by the government. Um, we've done a lot of work um, in terms of understanding what support businesses may require going forwards into recovery. 
and there is um, a Somerset wide economic recovery strategy, which is something to note. Uh, moving on, please. The new normal, I suppose I just wanted to reflect that, you know, we are seeing, you know, a decline in the, the high street as we knew it, and we've got opportunities to do things about that. And I know um, in other parts of my role, we're doing work on that, which will be covered in further slides. Um, there are questions around traditional office working space and what that will look like moving forwards. We know that when anything like this happens, there's always um, a greater impact on younger workers. If we look at the 2008 um, recession, we saw the same things happening and back beyond that. Um, however, we've also seen some um, sectors grow. So, you know, we shall have to see what happens and we're keeping a close eye on particular sectors and what might be done. And next slide, please. So business grants. I would reflect publicly that local authorities had a massive challenge and still have. You know, the systems that are, that are used were never set up to deliver over 43 million and over 10,000 payments to local businesses. Um, it's been a major challenge. It's had a major impact on staffing within the organisation and indeed, in effect, out of a team of two, well, actually one at one point, but two within economic development within Mendip. Um, one of them was, has been working full time solely on business grants for the last year. And we have been working a lot of evenings and weekends in order to process these grants. Um, it, it has been a massive challenge. I'm aware that there are some businesses that will still be saying that they're waiting for money. We are doing our absolute best to get through those. There have been additional complications. Um, believe it or not, the audits are already taking place from the first rounds. So that adds to our, our workload as well. Um, the criteria from scheme to scheme has changed. You'll be aware. And then there were the tiers, then there were the additional schemes. Recently, the government changed um, if you like the evidence requirements and to put in some additional security checks that had to be undertaken for each business and that severely reduced our ability to make automatic payments to businesses and therefore has um, slowed the process down but we also have to understand that those additional security checks are important we continue to work on this and will continue to provide updates as we can Next slide, please. Over the last year, um, not the right time, um, but we have established a, a business, the Mendip Business Hub. You won't have heard a lot about this as yet. Um, however, it's an opportunity really to bring together all the needs of businesses into one small team. Um, we did hold our first event, um, which was an agents and developers forum. This was to allow, um, from a planning perspective, all the agents and developers to talk with us about some of the issues we're currently facing, for example, to do with phosphates and all sorts of other um, issues that, that have arisen. Um, it, it, we are developing the process so that we can coordinate inquiries to the business, business hub. And again, more action will happen moving forwards on that. Next slide, please. Um, a few things. There's a community-based retail platform, which is now live. This is My Mendip. This is something that we've undertaken in partnership with a community interest company based in the Mendip area. Um, this is now available. It incorporates <coughs> online purchase and a click and collect service. So we are promoting this to businesses as another channel for them and as an opportunity for them to network with other businesses. The tourism strategy and um, the objectives have now been agreed with the strategic tourism group and there is a representative from each each town council on that group and obviously massive links to economic recovery. We're developing a small tourism grant which more information will follow on and we have over the last well in October last year we signed a service level agreement with Visit Somerset. 
this means that 150 businesses within the Mendip area in effect received silver membership of um, Visit Somerset and we're coordinating um, marketing and promotion of the district across the district through this. Um, Visit Somerset have a massive following and it's a really fantastic opportunity for us to promote our area. We've also um, just taken through our cabinet process, the creative Mendip strategy. Um, this is again looking at clearly we know the impact on the creative sector throughout the last 15 plus months. Um, and this is an opportunity to provide some additional support for that sector. It's a very small amount of money in terms of the grant. Um, however, it will be distributed um, through each, each part of the district so that there's a fair distribution. Next slide, please, Laura. One of the other things that we're working on and that we received support for is to develop a logistics hub. Um, one of the areas that we know there are national and local skills shortages in is around logistics um, based roles. So warehouse operative, forklift, uh, truck, um, HGV. Now, whilst these may all become um, e-vehicles in the future, there will still be a need for, for drivers. It's a really important area where we can help people get skills and upgrade their skills. And there are a lot of opportunities in the sector. So more to follow on that as we develop that later this year. We're also clearly promoting aspects such as apprenticeships, kickstart funding, um, and working around the district um, on the development of support through hubs um, and not as much undertaken as I would have liked over the last year due to the resource issues that I mentioned earlier. So we've had to prioritise what we do. Um, next slide please Laura. We have, however, managed to um, do a full week of a business support week in collaboration with South Somerset. There was, and there's also a programme events through our website. Um, there's also the Growth Hub available for additional support for businesses. Um, at Mendip, we're also producing and will circulate once it's done a guide on support and funding for organisations in the district, because sometimes it's difficult to know where to go for what support. Um, we're looking at um, whether we can do business awards or some kind of business awards light this year. I think realistically, um, taking the temperature of businesses, I think, you know, there is too much going on. Um, and I think it might be better to um, wait until 2022. We're also reviewing the economic development strategy and are getting together the evidence base for that. So all the data, um, and again, this will be shared on a, a town level once that's available. And we will also then do some consultation events and obviously we'll advise everyone when they're going to take place. Um, it's, it's important to mention that amongst all this, um, we were also successful with the Glastonbury Town deal which is 23.6 million in capital funding for Glastonbury. Um, it does have an impact across the district. Any investment, and that's capital investment, does have a ripple effect because it's creating new jobs, new services um, throughout the district. And currently there are two staff in economic development and I've just recruited another one. Um, which brings us up to full capacity um, and where we were just over a year ago. Um, so there will be somebody who can focus on skills because I'm now looking guilty at Maxine when I haven't been able to attend some of the vocational skills um, meetings because I've had to prioritise the grants. Next slide, please, Laura. Um, a number of other funding streams that we are working on at the moment um, collectively collaboratively. There's the levelling up fund, which is the opportunity to bid up to 20 million per MP constituency. Um, and obviously there are two crossing the district. So working with, with Peter and the team on, on what that might look like. 
Um, there will be consultation on that, and it is a similar process to the Glastonbury Town deal in that it follows the Treasury five case business case process. We don't know when we'll be invited to bid. There was an initial round in June, but that was mainly for transport schemes that were actually already happening. Um, we are working with the MPs uh, developing bids and the, the main areas are regeneration, green or eco travel and culture. So they're the main areas for each bid across the country that are being focused on. The Community Renewal Fund, again, we worked collaboratively and there were a number of bids that were submitted um, relating to Froome and across the district. Um, we wait to hear the outcome of that. There's a limited amount of funding available uh, nationally. Oh, I can see your emails, Laura. Thank you. <laughs> um, and that's something that we, we hope to hear um, in July as to which bids were successful. Um, but again, we wait to hear a number of aspects, including uh, feasibility studies relating to Froome were submitted. Um, Reopening the high street, again, we're working across all towns and rural areas to look at the best distribution of, I don't like saying that 102,000 is a small amount of money, it isn't, but when you divide that across the whole district, it becomes a small amount of money. We have, I, I hope, divided that out fairly across the, across the area. And certainly everybody's been involved in the discussions. We hope we've submitted our action plan to government and we're waiting for approval on that. Once we receive that approval, obviously we will liaise to spend the money as we'd all agreed across the district. Okay, next slide please, Laura. There we go, I was just over 10 minutes. Thank you. Okay, Julie, thank you very much indeed. A very comprehensive uh, set of slides. Thank you very much. Um, I've got a number of questions, but um, before I come to those, is there anyone who would like to ask questions for that presentation, please? Andy Palmer. Yeah, thanks, Nick. Um, Julie, thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, it's lovely to see you this evening. Um, feels like a lifetime ago since we, uh, we actually sat down in the chamber and had a meeting. So. Uh, so thanks for that. <clears throat> a couple of points. First of all, you mentioned obviously the very strong relationship that, that you and your team have with uh, with Peter and, and Viv. I think it's excellent and, and, and look forward to seeing that continue. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. But the main point I wanted to make was uh, credit, uh, credit's due to mend it. I appreciate, as you said, with the, uh, the work that went into actually having to distribute the the funds to businesses uh, making claims um, for, for, for COVID. The experience that, that, that I've seen from businesses I've spoken to and, and, and dealing with, with, with it through my business as well, it's been absolutely fantastic. Um, the claims process was really, really straightforward of the application process um, and the funds were, were paid out really, really quickly. And I think, I think men did actually really need to take some, 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 credit and, and and thanks to from free businesses for, for the way that that was actually delivered so uh, if you can feed that back that'd be great i will do thank you Randy, uh, anyone else maxi thank you uh lovely lovely to see you again um thank you for everything that you you've been doing i know it must have been an incredible challenge in these times as it has been for all of us um what i'd like to ask you is is there anything being put aside for businesses to do with mental health? Because we know that that's a really big factor. It's come up in the vocational training group, um, people trying to continue or get back into the workplace and maybe feeling vulnerable or anything like that. So what I wondered is whether there's anything put aside to support mental health. Thank you. Not directly from a district perspective, however, um, there was something put forward within the community renewal fund bids that was countywide. 
and also the countywide business cell meeting, um, we looked at what was being done to support this in Devon, and we're looking at whether we can bring that model into Somerset rather than reinventing the wheel. We are meeting tomorrow, so I might know more on that. Yes, it is Thursday tomorrow, isn't it? Yes, tomorrow. Um, so I might know more on that tomorrow, but yes, I'm well aware, I'm aware of, of the issue. Thank you, Max. I've got Rich and then Paul next, Rich. Hi, Julie. Can you hear me? Speaking to the yeah. mic, Rich. Okay. <laughs> not sure if I can be heard or not, but uh, hopefully so. Thank you for the presentation. I'm particularly interested in the levelling up fund, so if, uh, if and when that, that comes about, I'd like to know more about that. That was really interesting. And uh, I've, I've just got a question. You're, I know you're, it might not really be you, because I know that you're dealing with really most of the economic side, but planning and growth. I've fielded quite a few complaints recently about Mendip's planning department, and I understand you're having staffing problems. Uh, are we any closer to getting some uh, some appointments there, do you know? Uh, if not, could you uh, sort of urge uh, Mendip to kind of appoint people fairly quickly? Because I understand that this is causing quite a logjam on applications, which of course would be a knock-on effect, a negative knock-on effect for the economic growth. So it's, it, it may not be your hat, as it were, but uh, if you could pass that on, uh, it's causing some issues at the moment. That would be really helpful. Thank you. Sadly, it is my hat. Okay. And so I will take responsibility. I have the whole of everything to do with planning and growth. Um, in terms of recruitment into the team, yes. Uh, this week, we've actually given... given the other situation at the moment within Somerset, I was concerned that we, we might um, have problems with on a permanent basis. Um, we have taken some agency cover in the interim. Actually, we've managed to appoint two new um, full-time, uh, well, one, one senior planner and one principal planner this week. Um, however, the phosphates issue is having a massive impact on the workload of the planners. The applications that we're now having to deal with, which I know you're part of the district, but you know, we, we have to deal with everything, um, take um, an, an inordinate amount of time when they're being taken forwards um, with what the ecologists have to do, um, what the planners have to submit to ecology, what the agents have to submit to ecology. So the answer is yes, we've managed to recruit this week. We're working on it. We're doing everything we can and hopefully that will improve. We have managed to get the validation statistics to um, a level of which, at which I'm much happier. So applications are now being validated within four days at the moment, which gives the planners a lot longer to be able to um, resolve the queries. Um, so hope, yes, you will see an improvement and we have recruited this week. Okay, thank, thank you for that. Very useful, thank you. Thank you, Rich, thank you, Julian. Paul, Paul Wall. Uh, thanks, Nick, and thank you, Julie, for your, for your presentation. Um, it sounds like Mendip are, are doing lots for economic development in, in Mendip. Um, I just wanted to ask really, um, is that uh, work being done in line with Mendip's uh, econ uh, sorry, their green agenda, if you like, their ecological agenda? Um, it's, as, as you, I'm sure you're aware, some, some people might argue that economic growth is actually a problem um, environmentally. So I wonder really how that's being tackled um, at Mendip. And particularly, uh, one thing I noted uh, with regard to your um, encouragement for uh, tourism, you know, are you encouraging visitors to, to travel by, by uh, methods other than using the car? In as much as we can, and indeed one of the strands of the strategic tourism group is all around um, multi-user paths, promoting our walking and cycling routes. And I think, and Peter will have to come in on this one, um, we've also done a lot of work around walkers are welcome within that group. 
Um, and I think Froome have led the way in helping other parts of the district do the same. That, that certainly is the case, and, and uh, Emma Parker, who has been so involved with our Walk as a Welcome initiative in Froome, has been sharing her experience with uh, colleagues across the district and uh, enabling them to, to follow in our footsteps, literally. Uh, so, uh, yes, we, we've been working very closely with, with district colleagues. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Julie. Um, uh, Rob. I have to unmute, sorry. Thank you. I just wanted to come back to you, Julie, on, um, on the first part of Paul's question, which is really how much emphasis does Mendip put into um, encouraging businesses to, to go down, as it were, a green, sustainable route, um, rather than just coming back in any old fashion? Um, one of the things that, I, I suppose the answer is over the last year and a half, I was focusing on helping them stay afloat, if I was to give you a very honest answer. Um, moving forward, when we're developing, as I talked about the new economic development strategy, then we will ensure that there is a focus on doing that sustainably. Um, in the past, before, before we went into lockdown, I was working with a lot of um, local businesses on how they could do things in a better way. And that's about promoting it to businesses in terms of both saving money and being more sustainable. Um, worked with a couple of local businesses who have now gone for, for example, um, they, they, they've been introduced a lot more solar power. Um, so, so there are some good examples. We could do more and the new economic development strategy will help us focus that. So I can't, I can't claim to have changed the world. No, thank you. Um, at the same time, though, you have declared a climate and ecological emergency, and I'm just wondering how, to what extent you're actually measuring your um, steps towards achieving that through um, encouraging businesses to, to take the steps necessary to play their part in, 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 in moving towards that goal. Again, when we do things like when we did the... Um, tourism strategy. Um, we have to do a, a climate change um, assessment, a risk assessment, to look at the impact of that. When I'm presenting proposals, um, we do look at the, the climate impact, so that's all assessed. And in terms of, as I say, I think the big thing is that moving forwards where we look at all the grant applications that we're putting in. So for example, the Glastonbury Town Deal has a number of projects within that. It has a green energy project. It has a farming project. When we're looking at the levelling up funds, they will all be based around achieving growth in a more sustainable manner moving forwards. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Uh, thank you very much, Julie. Are there any other questions from any other colleagues around the room? I can't see any. Um, Julie, I've got a couple. Um, I, I echo what um, Andy certainly said about the amount of work that's been done to implement a rather clunky government process to dish out the grants to um, businesses. And I think um, Jenny and the team did a fantastic job. Um, the one area I think there was um, there has been a problem where we probably together could improve should this ever happen again is communications. Um, I, I'm one of the uh, market war councils of the small businesses in town and um, I kind of had to remind myself, they, they, some of them are really, really desperate and a lot of us who are lucky enough to get regular wages, it's kind of easy to forget. And um, I've had people um, in, in a, a real sort of uh, state of distress um, and, and a kind of regular communication from Mendit throughout that process, just reassuring people that they hadn't fallen out, they weren't um, missed off the system would have been, I guess, helpful. And that's just something, it's never perfect, but I think I'd like to reinforce the fact that, as Andy mentioned earlier, how well I think your team did, and thank you for that support. There's still a few, um, a few fallen through the net at the moment, but I'm sure they'll be swept up hopefully in the near future. Um, we are, sorry. Sorry, no one, sorry. We are still processing grants and the applications are still coming in. And of course, 
it could have been better, but Jenny and her team is Jenny and one other person and me. Just right. stress that. So every time we stop work to check whether somebody's received their grant or not, we are not processing more. And I totally get that we could have done more communication and it has been a balance in terms of updating the website and making sure that those messages were, were consistent. It's really hard to keep communicating out. And you are right. It, it's, I have to say that my background is customer focus and it's really hard when you're not responding to people the same sure. day or the yeah. same week. It's like, do I post payments or... So yeah, I, I, I understand that, but just that point, I, I thought there was um, Jenny with a team of 20 people busy rushing around. Had we known how much fuel, I could have fed that back and people would have understood. So just a simple point, but thanks for that. Um, and my last point, because I'm conscious of the time, um, is, you know, it is a really, really challenging time. And you've mentioned in your answers to both Paul and Rob about, you know, the sort of balance between economic recovery and the sort of green agenda and so on. But um, I've noticed, and I'm sure a lot of my um, fellow councillors and officers who spend time and, and our um, residents who, who visit around the town, it's, it's quite a grim time. There's, a, there's a much less enthusiasm than I can feel among independent traders for getting involved in initiatives. It, it just feels that kind of sense of, oh, it's really hard. And some of the things that I think perhaps could be made a bit easier for us um, are things, simple things to try and deliver for the town. I mean, there's a, one of our streets has asked for some um, planters to be placed along uh, a, a street on the pavement. And that takes about eight weeks of hurdles to clear before we can get those through. Um, things like litter bins, where there's obviously a gap. Again, it's one of those things that seems to be very time consuming process to get them. And I appreciate your caught in the middle a bit with that because it's a three tier authority and so on. But um, so those kind of things that people remember and small things that we can do together when people say we need that can make a huge difference. So thank you for everything you're doing and continue to do. Okay. okay. Thanks very much indeed, Julie. Um, okay, I don't see any other hands up. So if we can now move please to Viv, who's gonna give us uh, an update on business support. Thanks Viv. Okay, um, Laura, if you could put the um, first slide up. Just got a few slides. Thank you. Um, what I'll do is I'm going to give a, a brief update about the work we've been doing with the local business community. So, um, I mean, one of the things we've been continuing to do in the last six months is our, our online networking and events. Uh, I think the lessons we've learned is we've we were trying to make it a bit more interactive and um, we've started doing breakup rooms and then we found that's worked really well as a formula so trying to stick to maybe a 30 minute presentation and then having some breakup discussions um the picture on it's a letter right i'm not sure now but the one with the four ladies that was from our international women's day event which was a whole up and kind of networking and <laughs> skilling and collaborating events and Actually, there was a breakout session that we had a number of breakout sessions and from that a couple of ladies actually went out and had a real coffee when they could so I thought that was a success. Um, the picture there of the four ladies they were um, there were four local businesses that we invited to along as part of a women mean business panel and they were discussing the challenges they had faced over the year, but also what some of the some of the things they had done to stay resilient and really sharing their support for each other. And what has also inspired them to keep going through, through what's been obviously a difficult year for businesses. Um, Lizzie also did a gender bingo game, which was uh, very interesting and got everyone involved. And we finished with some cocktails from Melody. So I think we're just we were learning, you know, it's not ideal for everyone, but actually trying to make it more interactive when we're online. Um, we've been doing this in our workshops as well. The um, picture on the other side that's taken from our retail workshop we did in February. And then uh, we actually had people working together in small groups in these breakout rooms, doing action plans and really talking to each other about what, what they want to be doing and sharing ideas. So, you know, it, there, is some, there is definitely some benefits in these online events. Um, however, we are also aware that people are very eager to come back and start talking and networking in person. So from September, we've planned a, a number of events, our discussing dues that are going to be held here in the chamber. 
Um, and the idea is to, to get people together, but keeping the, keeping the focus on like a kind of solid 40 minute training session with breakout rooms and discussions. And I think we'll be looking at streaming these so that so we can continue this access for all. Next slide, Laura, please. So uh, on top of the training and networking, we've been continuing to communicate with our local businesses. Um, we, the business bulletin, I think I mentioned in the last time I picked it up, it used to be every two months, but because of the, the need of information that had to go out and the constant changing information, it, it, it was pretty well fortnightly. I think we're now looking at around about every month that something happens in it. So it, we do something to do our top ones and it's, it's become you know, very much, I think people have appreciated it hearing not only the information that they need to hear from the central government, um, but also hearing about what we're doing in the town and how, keep making people still feel connected. If it's possible, Laura, I'd, I'd like to hand over to George to talk about what she's been doing. For the Hello. Well, um, well, yeah, well, I've just been um, keeping the Discover Froom uh, <coughs> website up to date with business listings and um, I've been trying to sort of keep the channels of communication open with retailers and hospitality um, industry in the town. Actually, is something reflected in what Nick said earlier. I haven't had a huge amount of response actually from people, and I've I've just tried to be encouraging people to kind of get in touch if there's anything that they want. If there are any sort of anniversaries coming up, or if anyone's doing anything in particular, um, any promotions or things. Um, but as you can see on the slide there, we've also just relaunched the Discover Froom. Facebook and Instagram um, feeds, which is largely to just do a little bit different to the town council feeds and, and just promote Froome as a, as a place to visit and to encourage people to support local businesses. Um, and it's, it's a slow burner, but it's already only, we only just um, brought them back to life at the end of May, but we're already starting to sort of see an increase in followers and people are kind of, um, interacting with us a bit more and also actually to say we'll, get, we'll probably talk about it a bit later with Find but we've also linked Discover Froom um, with Find in, in as much as the things to do section for families so I'm hoping that that will kind of work as a sort of nice um, a, sort of, a sort of bridge from from the town council website over to Discover Froom as well so even sort of locals as well will become sort of familiar with Discover Froom if they aren't already um, yeah, and that's it really. I would guess, you know, in terms of the social media for Discover Froom, it's, we're just trying to find a nice balance of promoting businesses, if people have got anything special going on, um, and also just Froom as a, as a nice place to visit, and also just picking out events every now and then and just and helping people on their way, I guess. Thank, Thank you, George. George. I mean, I certainly, I know, um, you no know, businesses I've spoken to. It, we've really changed Discover Firm. It's now becoming a place to talk about business events and businesses activities. And I, I think um, it's really useful now for all the shops that have had to open and close during different lockdowns and different hospitality venues. It's been a great central source for them to be able to, you know, talk, update everyone about what they're doing and particularly all the online services they were able to offer over the last year. It's really been a valuable resource for, for local businesses. So next slide, please, Laura. Okay, so next steps. Uh, I'm really eager to uh, restart the good business visits. Um, Andy and I did quite a lot of work on this just before lockdown, um, looking at really revisiting all the questions that we have for businesses. This is where we would go and visit businesses and look at you know, what are they doing economically, but also what are they doing in terms of their social impact to the town? How are they engaged with, you know, with the community? What steps could they do to become more actively engaged uh, and also more collaboration with other businesses? And we now have Nikki who's joined the resilience team and she's eager to join me, thank God, because it's not my area of expertise to really focus on what can they do to um, improve their environmental impact as well. So we are keen to go out and visit businesses. We, we have, we had created it into an online survey, but we just felt it didn't feel right last year sending out to people, challenging them. And also we really missed just sitting down and listening to them and that opening that dialogue. So 
I think we've already been to it. There's a couple of places we were here, but hopefully we'll start in July. So that's going to be exciting. It'll be great to be out about meeting people and then you know, really hearing what, what they want to tell us. Um, the good business reviews are, are a great way of connecting with businesses around the town and certainly one of my focuses for, for this year as well is to really look at widening our reach. Uh, we have done quite a lot in the town centre of retail hospitality because it, you know, it's so visible the need that they have just now, but there are other sectors out there and there's other parts of the room. Um, so looking at really working with different types of sectors, maybe the STEM sectors like science, technology, engineering and manufacturing. Also looking at different locations around the town and um, we've got our trading estates and I'm actually really, really excited about getting involved with the um, station approach. There's so much happening there. It's becoming, I think it's going to become quite a destination and I think it could be somewhere that we could hook up really well with and get some great collaboration going between those businesses on that site. So um, just to say um, if anybody has any questions about what we've been doing with the local business community. Thank you very much. Thank you, George. Um, any questions? I see any hands raised. Yeah, I can see Anissa, I think. Thanks, Nick. Um, thank you, Viv and George. That was really uh, that was a great little update there, actually. Um, Viv, I just really wanted to ask you about Discuss and Do. Um, I was at the last one and I thought it was a really, really good meeting. I thought it was excellent. There was a lot of interaction and I thought it was a great kickoff to bringing back Discuss and Do. Um, I was just really going to ask whether we're likely to be considering uh, changes in time, because I know last time we were talking about the sort of breakfast one day, lunch the next. Um, is that, do we have that sort of plan in hand for the yeah. future of Discuss and Do? Yeah, so the discuss to do is a joint one between ourselves and the Film Chamber of Commerce. And we, we felt the format, we actually love the work in lunches. And so we're looking yeah. at basically kind of almost merging the two. Um, so the one that we're doing is, we've got so far we've put the Chamber for September, November, and maybe December. But the idea is to have a, an 11 o'clock start. We felt that seemed to, that's, the feedback was that people enjoyed, people were able to come along at that time, 11 o'clock, maybe a 40 minute in-depth training session, presentation. And then some kind of networking and possibly food if we're able to. You know. right. So making it so you have that combination of the social with the training. So it's going to be roughly eleven o'clock to one o'clock. Okay. I'm talking to people that that seems to work. Um, I would love to do a couple of evening things at some point as well. I, I really want to do a summer party, but that's that's not going to happen. So I'm thinking. I'd be up for that. <laughs> So I, did, I think there's something about the evening as well. Um, yep. It might not be as regular to discuss to do as every, every fourth Tuesday of every month. It might not be that regular, but I think there's something about getting people together. And I, I was right. talking to um, Dawn Denton about, um, she was quite keen about this idea of um, people who work from home. We could all just go and have like a Friday, you know, like mm. something a bit organised. And it might, not, it might not be the Film Town Council that actually needs it. I kind of think it probably is best if it's not. But, uh, but we can certainly promote it and maybe there could be a, a Friday payday working from home. Great. Yeah, I, no, I love that idea of actually the changes because I think, you know, the more people we can tap into, regardless of what, you know, that whatever time of day or night they can make, um, we are spreading ourselves around a bit more. And I think that's great. So thank you. Yeah. So I don't know if Andy might be mentioning this, but I am also in our last bulletin, we just did a push for the bright business breakfast as well. Okay. That's, another, that's another set. Yeah, there you go. Okay, <laughs> good. Okay, okay, thanks, Viv. Thanks, Anita. Thanks, Viv. Andy, was that your um, point you were going to make? Uh, <clears throat> no, it wasn't, Nick, but I'm always up for a, a plug for Bright. So uh, thanks, Viv. That was brilliant. Um, no, I, I was just going to say, um, uh, I mean, in terms of, of, of the, the good business framework and, and the visits that, that, that you're looking to, to kick off again. Um, obviously happy to work with you on that as, as, as we did before lockdown. Um, still massively keen to, to, to see the idea of a, of a Froome kite mark um, coming to the fore. But one of the other things that, um, that's been discussed at, at, at Froome Chamber of Commerce, and I know I think Pauline is, is, is in attendance tonight, who is currently the... Uh, the president of the chamber. One of the things that's been raised, I think, a couple of times is the idea of a of a, a similar sort of thing as a kite mark, but a, a made in frame type uh, 
type situation. Uh, we've obviously got a lot of, of makers and, 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 and independents who, who produce stuff here. And it'd be good to explore that with you further if, 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 if we can. Definitely, Andy. I think we, we launched the um, virtual Christmas market last December. And from that, we, we managed to connect with, I think we had over 100 virtual stores of independent creators. Mm. So, I mean, we knew there was a lot, but we were actually astounded by how, how much they wanted to be engaged. And so we, <coughs> again, we were, one thing I was looking at was maybe doing some kind of summer market, but, you know, but we would certainly like to try and do some way of getting them together. And so just now we've got, we've got a kind of virtual space on Discover Thrill where we're promoting them, but I think um, we've got them engaged. We invited them to the retail workshop that we did in February, so that's partly put on for them for another way of engaging, but I'm really keen to keep pushing that engagement. We don't want to lose touch with them because it's a great section of sector of, of Thrill and I don't think it's one we've, we've really raised as much before and, and they were straight up when we offered them, you know, a way of engaging with us, so keen to continue that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jim. Um, Rob, I've seen, I've seen your hand. I'm mindful of the time. We're just about halfway through. I just wanted to remind everyone, I know you know this, Viv and others, and George, but um, for example, we, did, we launched a Fiverr Fest in 2019. I think we had over 100 people. We offered it this year and we had two people. There's a real sense of uh in the town and we really got to be mindful of that, I think. Okay, um, if I can be quick. Rob, you have another question or was that a hand withdrawn? Uh, no, it was a question, actually. Yes, um, I'm afraid my memory might be rather hazy, but I had the impression that we're going to organise a, a some sort of a business event down at the Cheese and Grain. And I know COVID's got in the way of that, but is, it, is, it, is that still something in your planning? Uh, I mean, we did, it, yeah, at the last Town Matters that we did an update, it did come up. I mean, I think, I think we would be talking with the Chamber of Commerce about that because it's a joint event. Um, um, certainly, yeah, we haven't we haven't put a date forward for it because I think it is very much on hold. And Thank you. you. Chip in the... Anita. Thanks. Yeah, that was actually going to be my question, Viv. Yeah, but to say, I know we were talking about that. Hopefully it'd be something we can resurrect in 2022. But I did wonder whether at the end of this year, I guess businesses have got so much else to think about in terms of just pure survival at the moment. As Nick says, they probably are feeling a bit deflated anyway. Um, but I just wonder if that can be on the agenda towards the end of this year to start raising that possibility of who we might be able to engage in a potential business expo next year. I mean, I think, I think it has, has been discussed at the, uh, from the Chamber of Commerce as well. But if we, as a joint event, we, we should revisit at least what we'd like to do about that. Sure. Thank you. Andy, just the last question, if it can be brief, please, because we're at eight o'clock now. Yeah, no, I was just going to come back on that. It, it, it certainly has been discussed at the Chamber Committee. Um, again, Paulie might, might correct me if I'm, I'm wrong, but as far as my take from, from when we've discussed it, we, I think the Chamber would be happy to be looking at 2022 for, 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 for that to happen. So. Okay. Thank you very much indeed. Um, thank you, Viv. Thank you, George, for your input. Um, right, we're now on to item five. Now, this is a three-handed presentation on the update on the work of Vocational Training Group and the spring forward part of Froome Town Council's Discover Froome website. And our presenters are Maxine Collier, lead councillor, Vivian, and Dave West from Somerset Skills and Learning, I think. Welcome, Dave. Who's going to start? I'll start and then pass to Viv. Um, can everyone hear me? Great, it's a good start. Uh, okay, so all the way through the uh, pandemic, we've carried on with our vocational training group. Um, Laura, have you got the first slide, please? Thank you. Um, so, we started the group, it's coming up for two years ago now. So it, it is quite extraordinary. And throughout the pandemic, the people that you see on the screen have all been part of it, plus others actually, who, who have come and gone during the time. And one of the best things about the group is the way that everybody has communicated with each other. So not, it's not only a Froome Town Council endeavor, it is a real partnership throughout the town and beyond to support people to get the training that they need. And this is particularly important at the moment where so many people, old and young, you know, are, are disaffected, are 
needing to get into training and <coughs> really struggling sometimes. So there's lots of elements to it. You know, we look at the actual training that people can get, can have. We also look at mental health, as I mentioned earlier when Julie was on. And one lovely thing is the way that the group supports each other. So just the, just the last meeting, Critchell School was struggling to get um, work experience for the youngsters and get people who could come and see them or where they could go. And, immediate, and so uh, Critchell came to the group and immediately the group just provided that experience for them. Uh, thank you, Anita's son, as one of them. Um, and so it's, it's just a very supportive group. And if we can support each other and people can connect with each other, then we can be stronger supporting the town in the training needs that it has. Now I'm just gonna pass over to Vivian for the next bit. Thank you. Uh, next slide, please, Laura. So uh, as Max has said, we have continued to meet um, during the whole pandemic. We've been meeting on Zoom probably every six weeks. Um, a couple of meetings ago, we thought we, we kept having meetings and talking about young people. And then we thought we kind of looked around the room and went, oh, we should probably invite some along just to make sure what we're saying is on track. So we, we managed it. We invited, we had three people that came along. Um, one was Max and son. So uh, they were age 16 to I think about 24. And uh, so just on the screen, this, this, is, this is kind of feelings and statements that they kind of fed back to us in terms of how they feel uh, the pandemic has affected them regarding training and work. So they, they mentioned that, which is something I hadn't really thought about, for, but for a young person at the very start of their career, taking a year out can really feel like a lifetime. I think for, for people who are maybe you know, established in their role, feel supported in their work, it's, it's scary, but it's nowhere near as, as, as daunting as just when you're taking your first steps. Uh, they also mentioned this kind of sense of endless drifting, this unknown that they were going to, and uh, yes, again, emphasised by just the sheer length of time that it felt to them. And it was also highlighted the difficulty they had in getting motivated to, to start training or go back to training or to start looking for work due to their kind of starting and stopping of all the lockdowns. Um, an interesting point was some, one of them said that they had very little contact with other young people and that the two isolation of this, and you know, I guess you think, you know, with these young people, 16 to 21, they should be out, you know, partying, or working, or working in hospitality, even they're surrounded by young people and peers. And that's been a huge loss to them. And there was this overarching sense of just, you know, uncertainty. And you know, fitting in with what um, Maxine was saying about you know, well-being is this real, real sense of anxiety and, and fears about the future as well. You know, the, the cost of what this is going to cost for them and, and how that's going to affect their jobs, their taxes, mm -hmm. just the anxiety that comes from it. Uh, but they were very positive as well. They were really lovely people to have. Um, talked a bit about communications and they said, yep, don't make it patronising. Um, lots of different modes of social media is what's needed. Uh, we, we said that we are looking at doing an event and they said that's great don't call it a training event <laughs> you know make it something that's interesting to them something that maybe covers well-being or is part of, of something larger and also which i thought was really interesting this also has a platform for the young people to get together and talk about their issues and next slide please Laura. well i keep looking for you in the room <laughs> there you are um so we uh I think in my last update, we said that we were about to launch the Spring Forward section on the FTC website. So Spring Forward is, is the name that we've given for this kind of collaboration of our work, kind of encouraging people to go forward and seek their training and upskilling. So we now have this section on the website where we have um, information from all our training providers of the types of courses they offer, the ways of training that they do, and really encouraging people to therefore go onto their sites and find out a bit more. Um, but also having ourselves well, myself down as, as the main contact just they want some directions for when they're looking for or starting to think about training. Maxi, do you want to talk about the event because that's exciting? Yes, and and we are now looking forward to the 25th of September, which is actually Froom Carnival Fun Day. So we are going to show everyone that councillors and council workers and um, trainers can be fun. 
because we are going to be lots and lots of fun. Uh, the idea, what, what actually happened was our, our event that we were going to have that was being hosted by Somerset Skills and Learning at their offices in Palmer Street. I think it was actually meant to be the day of that, the, the pandemic lock, first lockdown started. So we couldn't do it. And this was to get lots of young people, lots of people in front of trainers so that they could get the things they needed. But uh, Peter, I just want to give a big shout out to Peter Wheelhouse as well, who also managed to get this organized. And uh, we are now going to be part of the Froome Carnival Fun Day. And it will be a really great place for all sorts of people in the community, because it's not just a set, it's not, it wouldn't be people coming to a venue. There will be people at the Carnival Fun Day who we will grab and get them to do all sorts of things like potentially maybe some nails or some beauty stuff, maybe plunging a toilet or various things. And in the meantime, the trainers will be able to talk to them and you know find out what they want to do. And hopefully we'll get lots of people signed up who otherwise might not be getting training in the near future. Um, we are aware that there's a pandemic, um, you might have noticed. Uh, so we're aware that 25th of September, you know, may or may not happen, but we are assuming it will. And so we've set up a working party again throughout the town um, to get ready for this fun day. And so watch this space because it is gonna be really good. Back to Vivian. Thank you. Um, next slide, please, Laura. So uh, towards the end of last year, the Kickstart scheme went live. The Kickstart scheme is a central government scheme uh, to uh, help um, young people on university credit gain, start, gain six month work placement experience uh, with, a, with a business. Um, we worked uh, with local businesses to promote the idea and we also put it in our communications. Um, and I think what has been outstanding is, uh, is the work that Adventure have done in managing to confirm so far over 60 placements just in Flynn alone. So Adventure were probably, I think they are the main uh, coordinators for the town. So they are providing the training, helping young people throughout their whole six month placement, but also very much helping the businesses through the journey. And I think they've done a, a fantastic job in getting these placements up and running. And we are also very delighted here at Film Town Council because we have a new trainee ranger who has joined us through the scheme. So um, I'm going to hand over to Dave West from Somerset Skills and Learning in a minute. But if anybody has any questions just now, just about what's been presented in terms of our work and vocational training. I can't see any hands raised on the screen. I've got I mean, might, I mean, hopefully Dave's going to talk about how some of the learning have adapted their training, so that might get some discussion. Oh, we could do it at the end when the screen ends up. Thanks, Dave. Thank Welcome, Dave. Thanks very much. Welcome. Evening, everybody. Thanks for having me along this evening. And just to echo uh, what Maxine was, was saying in terms of the vocational group and how in the last two years it really has given us an opportunity to collaborate and work together, making new contacts with other training providers, being able to re refer to partners, which I think overall has been has been a huge benefit to, to Froome and the surrounding area. So we're really excited to be on board. We're really excited about the event. And thank you very much for being such a, a forward thinking um, town council to, to be running this group. Um, so I thought we'd use tonight, I'm going to be hopefully fairly, fairly brief, um, to update you on some of the, the updates from Somerset Skills and Learning. And for those that may not be familiar with us, to give you a quick overview of, of what we do. So if we can jump to the next slide, please, Laura, it'd be great. Um, Somerset Skills and Learning, we are a community interest company, and um, so our agenda is very much around supporting the community in which we serve to change people's lives through learning. So one of the ways we do that is through the um, Community Learning Partnership. We deliver the adult education budget in Somerset. So we fund organisations such as Mind in Somerset, such as Adventure, uh, Adventure in here in Froome, um, to support them to be able to deliver learning as an introduction to move them through their career development, to improve their well-being, a number of things. So alongside the community learning agenda, um, we also offer a, a very large range of qualifications, uh, apprenticeships and traineeships as well. So very much around something for everyone, I guess, um, for the post-16 market. If we could grab the next slide, 
um, we you'll, you'll probably be aware that we moved to Palmer Street um, just before the pandemic struck. And I'm mindful some of you will have never stepped into the building. So here's a real quick video that we shot just to give you a glimpse of, of what's inside 16 Palmer Street. It's a very, very empty building, as you, as you have seen in, in the video. And, and I guess one of the biggest things we've noticed um, throughout lockdown is that there's been a huge shift in demand. So where those three classrooms that you have seen in that video would have been fully booked five days a week. And um, we've now got all of our, our, our lessons still at this point, um, excluding just a handful for vulnerable and, and, and more needy learners and um, being delivered online. So there's a big shift and we're still unsure about how that shift will go going forward, whether we'll see people who want to return to face to face, whether there'll be more of a blended approach um, or whether people's preference will still be online. But to give you a kind of feel of, of what, what our offer looks like at the moment, we offer everything from GCSEs um, to digital skills and um, a big agenda at the moment on well-being. And I guess our USP in the marketplace is that, that most of what we offer is free. So around 90 percent of our courses are totally fully funded so that's something for anybody who is needing to change career need to ch change direction who's looking for a promotion who needs to find a job etc etc um, so a few things that are new if we can jump to the next slide um, that we've developed in the last 18 months because in some ways um, having a shift in people learning remotely has given us a massive opportunity um, we've seen some of the largest uh, learner numbers in the last 12 months and for example, maths last year, the maths and English GCSE, we had just over 100 people enroll onto that course, um, which was a record for us. We were really pleased with that. At the end of May, um, for this September, we're already on 170. So you can see how demand has increased so much for basic skills, such as maths and English. And we've seen that huge, huge, huge demand. What's also interesting too, is that we've offered that course across all of our centres and online, and 93% so far of those applications have opted for online uh, for a September start. So again, it's suggesting that people will be opting more for that distance learning route in the future. But the great thing is we've been able to offer lots of new courses. So there's now over 170 courses on offer that people can access from the comfort of their own home or from work. Plus, we don't want to move away from face-to-face -face learning completely. So one of the things we'll be doing next month is opening our new centre in Shepton Mallet to support the west side of Mendip. Um, it's a shop style learning centre on the high street where the tourist information centre was previously. And we're very much keen to ensure that our services are still accessible as they are on Palmer Street. So we don't want to move away from, from face to face, but it very much will complement what we do online. Some new bits to, um, to flag as well, the level three offer um, which is part of the National Skills Fund that you may have heard mentioned earlier in the year. We're really pleased to be able to offer the Level 3 um, funded offer. So up until now, we've been able to offer Level 2 qualifications fully funded. From August, we'll be able to offer the Level 3 um, qualifications if you don't already have a Level 3 qualification, which in, in everyday English is um, an A-level equivalent. So if you don't have an A-level equivalent from, from August, we will be able to support you with a level three qualification fully funded. So that's really exciting for us. And already we've got a level three in counselling that we'll be launching uh, and a level three in mental health as well. Um, counselling and mental health has now become our biggest sector. Um, so two years ago, we didn't offer any courses in counselling and mental health. If I had to tell you what our number one course is today, it's level two counselling. 
it's huge. Lots and lots of people are, are, are wanting to train and rightly so. So it's really great that it's on the agenda. A lot of people are, are, um, are signing up for courses in those areas. And the final thing to add is around beauty. If we can jump to the next slide, please, Laura, um, is that we're really keen as an organisation that we are diversifying and increasing our offer. So um, in the latter part of last year, we bought a, a childcare nursery in Yeovil, and we're looking to buy another one in this area in the year ahead. And we want to make sure that as well as offering training, we're in tune with what's happening in the workplace, in the real world. So one of the exciting developments for Froome that's happened very recently is that we've purchased the uh, beauty salon Cloud9 in Palmer Street. So that's still operating as a salon, um, which is great. It's got a huge customer base. It's fully booked for the next two months. Um, but from this summer, we'll also be offering uh, adults the opportunity to come in and train to be in, 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 in the beauty industry. We've uh, recruited a new tutor who started on Monday. We'll be offering fully funded community learning tasters. So there'll be opportunity to come in for short two hour workshops, which are fully funded, which can then lead on to qualifications in the future. So it's an area that we're really excited about um, for Froome that we can now offer this new sector around beauty, um, which will we'll grow in, we're hoping will grow in the next few months. So I think that brings us on to our final slide, please, Laura, which is um, if anyone has any questions um, that I can help answer this evening. Okay, um, thank you very much, Dave. I've learned a lot from uh, your presentation, um, as I have from uh, Maxine and, and Vibs uh, this evening. So um, have we any questions, please, for any of our presenters on this agenda item? Quick, sorry, Rich, I think it's a quick one for me. Thanks all three for this. It sounds fantastic. I, I'm really pleased with the uptake and the opportunities for level three, Dave. That sounds great. Fantastic that you're in the new venue and that it's all working out for you. Nice to see you again. Um, I, how is how secure is your funding going forward? Because this sounds like really important work that you're doing. Now, have you been sort of encouraged that this funding will be there for quite a few years to come? Sure. So our community learning funding was confirmed earlier this month, um, which, which is great news because some of you will be familiar with our um, our difficult period we had just over two years ago when we, we lost our funding um, and, and it caused significant concern for the organisation. But the great news was we, we, we came back fighting from that, the funding was secured and we've been successful in the latest round. So there's two years of funding secured there. Um, our adult education budget to be able to deliver these qualifications, the outcome of that for all providers is expected next week. Um, so we're sat, well, fingers crossed, as most providers are across the country, waiting for good news. On that one, we have bid um, twice the funding that we've had in the past. Um, we're being really ambitious because we do feel there's going to be a huge demand for funded training in the future. Um, so I think, I think to answer your question, Rich, I think we definitely feel in a much stronger position probably than we have before, um, and the demand is definitely there to be able to, you know, to, to make these applications hopefully successful as they can be. Great. Sounds like you're doing a really good job. Thanks, Dave. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Rich. I've got Maxine and then um, Anita. No, not Maxine. Sorry, Anita. Okay, thanks, Nick. Um, thank you, Dave. Yeah, that was that was absolutely great. And I just really wanted to, it's a, it's a comment really more than anything else. But but I did attend a, a session in, in the chamber recently um, with Adventure in collaboration with yourselves on uh, a session on resilience. And I have to say, hand on heart, that the idea of Somerset Skills and Learning for me was almost something remote that I didn't relate to that clearly. It was very much about English and maths and fairly dry subjects. Um, but this, the whole session that I attended was brought to life. It was so interactive. It was, and it's just given me a totally new insight into the work that you do. So I just wanted to say, well done. Great, thank you. Thank you, Anita. Um, I must try and get along to one of these session, sessions as well. Maybe the beauty one would be good for me. <laughs> um, any other questions on uh, there? Um, okay, thanks again, Viv. Thanks, Max. And thank you, Dave. Thank you very much. Uh, we're now on to agenda item number six, which is an update on the children and young people's project work and the new fantastic find part of the website. And I think that's Kate. It is indeed me. And, um, but before I start, I'd just like to introduce um, Melody Hunter-Evans, who you should be able to see there. Melody, can you give everybody a wave? 
and Nikki Cox, who are our um, Children and Young People's Projects Officers. But as this was their first council meeting, I thought it was a bit tough to throw them in at the deep end and present to you so they can listen tonight, learn the ropes, and they can do it themselves next time. Um, I'm going to give you a whistle-stop tour, and most of it is in that um, report that you've already had. Uh, Laura, can I have some slides, please? You'll see in the report, oh, can you just go back one? Thank you. So you'll see in the report that um, I've written the report against the objectives in the work programme. Um, broadly, our objectives are here and I'm going to talk to them tonight as well. So next slide, Laura. Running through all of our objectives are to continue to identify and fill gaps and in doing so, it's not that we look to necessarily deliver the services ourselves. In fact, almost always we look to not actively not deliver the services ourselves, but work with our partner organisations to do so. So in the last few months, since we have um, redeployed our staff into almost entirely into to the COVID response and then come back again into our normal day to day and ridden two horses for a little bit, we've spent quite a lot of time working to, to find out what the changing landscape means to children and young people and their families in Froome. Um, we've worked with Somerset, um, Mendip District Council, but most importantly, local practitioners. So with head teachers, with Froome Learning Partnership, with mental health teams, and a whole host of other organisations, we are super fortunate in Froome that we have a really thriving third sector uh, and they've been able to inform this work. So the three significant gaps were actually similar gaps to the, to the gaps that we were experiencing before we went into lockdown in March last year. Uh, people were reporting that they, they just didn't have access to information and signposting. Um, in terms of young people's mental health, there was a, a broad assumption that there, was a, that there was a gap in services for young people. And we worked with partners at the medical practice um, to bring a group of, of practitioners together to really, and with Freem College in particular, to better understand what services there are in Freem. Actually, we found a bit of a gap, um, but with some quick work with the County Council, whose responsibility it is to provide mental health services and supports across the county, we were able to identify that they hadn't quite got to Froome in the rollout of the services that they were doing across the county. And so we've now got a really comprehensive offer for young people over the age of 11. We've taken on hosting a Young People's Mental Health Forum, which previously, so sort of maybe about three years ago, had um, had run its course and there was no need to keep meeting. So we've started uh, that up again. And now our task is to look at uh, mental health support for young people under the age of 11, where potentially there is another gap. But again, it is the responsibility of the County Council in their various guises to, to, to make sure we fill those gaps. So we'll be working closely with them. Um, and then finally, the, the third gap is around universal provision and holiday activities. And obviously that's been a really significant challenge for us all in the last 18 months and isn't looking any easier this year. But Melody's worked really hard with um, local organisations to make sure that they're making best use of the food activities and hunger fund. Is that right? Not quite sure. Half. Um, holiday activities and food fund uh, where organisations are given a certain amount of money to support young people over a certain period of time to participate in positive activities but they also get fed um, and it is to replace the vouchers that families have been receiving for you know, on uh, at free school meals uh, where, they've, where they've missed out on free school meals. Um, so we've worked quite hard. We had a bit of a gap at Easter. We didn't have very many organisations come forward. We're hoping that gap will be slightly closed. But again, actually what it does is it, it just further demonstrates the gap we have in Froome already. And we had it before the pandemic of organisations that are there um, and able to deliver services over the holidays and outside of school time for young people. 
Um, it's particularly important for us that we look to fill those gaps because those univer that universal provision provides a, an early entry point into identifying any issues that families or children and people might be experiencing themselves, but also provides a really good opportunity for early help. And that the knock on, of course, of that is that families and young people are not reaching crisis and they're not needing the reactive services, which were way more expensive um, higher up the, the chain. Um, and we know that those services, so CAMS, social care, et cetera, are really stretched. So their thresholds are getting higher and higher and families are reaching a real point of crisis before that help steps in. So if we can provide free at the point of entry and universal services locally um, and couple that with some signposting and some support, then actually what we're doing is providing a much healthier environment for our local residents, but also su supporting that capacity issue further up. So access to information and signposting, and I skipped over it because, next slide please, Laura. Um, this project was started by Jess Frankham, who's on maternity leave and subsequently picked up by Melody, but enormous thanks to George, who has brought uh, a concept to life for us and worked really hard with her colleagues in the, in the comms team and our web developers to create a platform that is really fit for purpose. So what um, Melody and Jess did was gather lots of information and uh, we have over 500 entries now, over 65 pages, and on the Family Information Network directory, find. And you can find that on findfroom.co.uk. I know that we've sent you a lot of information about that, and hopefully you've all had a little chance to, to trawl it. But if you haven't, please do. It is really, really intuitive to navigate, I think, um, and hopefully you will appreciate it. Uh, but, you know, there are always going to be gaps and we'd love to know about those gaps. So I know that George has continued to, to finesse that um, and what it looks like and how it reads and making sure that it's really accessible. Uh, Melody is continuing to gather information and George has now amazingly got the two uh, websites talking to each other through Find. And so, uh, as she said earlier, Discover Frame can access information of find and, and vice versa. Um, what we are looking to do in the future is to continue to build that as a resource, but to spend a lot of time out and about talking to people about how to access it, but more importantly, how they can help other people access it. So um, I have a theory that a publican is a really great person to be sharing information. So of course our team will need to spend lots of time in the pubs in Froome over the coming months, uh, talking to them about, about the fact that this resource is there and they can signpost people that they think might need a little bit extra um, or know how to access the information. There's, there'll be a massive uh, comms campaign about it and Rachel and her team have been absolutely integral to the success or the beginnings success of this project um, and are supporting us enormously to think about how we take it out through schools, through nurseries, um, but also through events and lots of other opportunities over the, over the coming weeks and months. Uh, so massive thanks to all of the staff that have been involved in, in Find It Was a Mammoth Project. Uh, next slide, please, Laura. So alongside Find, um, we know that it's really important for practitioners, but also the wider community to be able to benefit from training opportunities. So last year, just as we went into lockdown, we ran the Link and Learn Play training. Uh, next slide, Laura. And then this year, in response to the mental health issues that our young people were experiencing and the lack of information about what services were out there and how people could access them, Melody, um, with some help from the comms team as well, put together their starting conversations training and also a really handy hints and tips guide for parents about how to start conversations around mental health. But it's online and uh, people can still view it. It also has information from all of the services about how you can access them. And um, through the course of this work, you know, I guess 
we knew, but we hadn't shouted about it, that, that you don't need to go to a GP to get a referral to almost all of the mental health services that are available for children and young people in the area, um, but people need to know how to access them. So we're hoping this is filling a gap. Next slide, Laura. So we have been, as you know, working on our play strategy for free and with Children's Scrap Store. Uh, we're also looking at how we embed playing out through our community development work. But we have a particular focus on, on adult play um, and opportunities for adults to play alongside children, young people in lots of different ways that we will be launching the, the start of this project properly um, at the picnic in the park. In, in Picnic in the Meadow, I should say. Um, and that will come with a, a questionnaire and obviously we will be out and about talking to people as much as possible. The hidden gate, gems, that's good. That's good. Need to move me on, otherwise I'll talk too much. Uh, the hidden gems uh, has been, again, a collaboration with, with us and the, the comms team and, and Melody and, lots, and Nikki and lots of spray cans to pop all sorts of bits and pieces, um, games really, familiar games around Froome, with the aim of encouraging everybody to play. And it's really difficult as an adult to walk down the street and see a hopscotch and not do it. Um, similarly, we thought Snakes and Ladders would be great fun and the Rangers have done an, another amazing job in the show field this year with, with the maze. Uh, and we will keep peppering those things through the town in the, in the coming months to encourage people to play more. Um, next slide, Laura. So we'll be spending the summer, starting relatively soon, out and about, promoting find, but also talking to everybody about the play strategy and why it's important for us all to play. And this year, it's never been more important than any other year. Um, so this is just a, an example of, of the different places we'll be. We will be at events that have a particular focus around children, young people, but actually we're super interested in being at events and meeting people and organisations that have a focus around adults, um, particularly with the play strategy, but also for finds so that everybody can promote and share and signpost and that will happen naturally and um, build resilience in our community. So the final slide, I think, Laura. Um, currently, Nikki and Melody are working on everything I've just told you, and they're starting to look at what our youth conference says might look like in the coming months. We're going to have two this year because this year's year eight haven't had the opportunity to attend a youth conference. We just managed to get last year's in. I think a week before the first lockdown um, and we haven't been able to do this year's so they will be going into year nine at the college in September and we've started conversations um, now with the college about what that might look like and Melody and Nikki will be shaping that in the in the coming weeks with the college so that we start to create something you know it's really important for us that every Year eight group in the last five years has had the opportunity to attend the youth conference, that they have a chance to have their say, but they also learn skills for participation. They learn practical um, skills and they're able to start to have a voice and to, to make a real difference in their community. They've also always got to vote on the um, PB events as well. So we will definitely be looking to do something similar in in the coming months and then of course next year we will have the next group of year eights in in march we'll be delivering a conference for them but the hope is we will be much better engaged in the college and we'll be able to work with the college to deliver the year eight conference and that will reach our aspiration our one of our original aspirations of this acting as a transition opportunity between the middle schools and Froome College. Um, so that, I think, is that my last slide, Laura? Yes. That was a whistle-stop tour of, uh, and, and on, on paper and on those slides, it doesn't look like very much, but, but the team and um, 
particularly Melody, Jess and Nikki, but none of it would happen without the communications team sort of sitting alongside us, helping us deliver all of this. Um, so yeah, any questions? You've taken what I was going to say, Kate. I was going to say it's not just your team, but fantastic work by right, right the way across. And welcome to Nikki and Melody, who I've not met yet. <coughs> Before I open it up, I just remember the first time I met you was at the Trinity um, Hall with Mark, actually. We met there and um, we talked about the idea of trying to map and link all the community networks across the uh, town. And um, we talked about that and you said you already got it. And I think it's fantastic how it's, how it's now come about with fine. But I was asked by somebody, why is it called family rather than group? I mean, that's kind of maybe a too long a question, but just what about no, that... single people move here? I'm sure you bounced that idea around and all sorts of things. Right, forget that we... question because we got time. We completely have. And actually, uh, so we bounced it around in lots of different iterations, but originally our Children Young People's Projects offices were part funded by Mendip and part funded by the County Council. That funding um, stopped on a possibly temporary basis during COVID. And so it's possible that we might in the future look to be sharing this with um, other areas across Mendip or, or further afield. So you would have fine chapter or find. Very fine true, Martin. fantastic, great. Okay, way ahead of me as always. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> right, I can see um, Rob and I can see um, Ali and Maxine. So I don't know if we put our hands up first. Can we start with um, Ali, please? Yeah, hi, Kate. Thanks for that. Fantastic. Um, well, yeah, we've also had our conversations over the years about mapping, and uh, it's great to, to see that now happening, happened. But um, what are the plans to update that? So um, Find is going to be an ever-evolving project I think for us and uh, we're making sure I mean all, actually as soon as um, we Melody and George sent out the information about find there was a that, that it had gone live there were a, a flurry of emails from organizations saying well could you just update our information about this or that or the other um, so we will just make sure we look to do that on a regular basis so we keep it up to date because it's only as as valid as it is up to date um, but, you know, obviously going forward, we would like to look at, at something that's slightly more sophisticated where organisations can update it themselves. Um, but that will be somewhere somewhere further down the line. Um, I think what it's really shown to us was that we knew there were lots of organisations working with children and young people, but they're a real spread. So they're small businesses, they're CICs, they're not-for-profit organisations, they're charities. They're statutory organisations and, um, you know, collectively that third sector is really very enormous in frame. And uh, so, yeah, the, there's a bit of a task in hand to keep to keep the momentum and keep it updated. But but we will. We hope. Okay, thanks, Kate. Thank you, Kate. Um, can I go to Rob next, please? And then Max and then John. Yes, thank you very much, Kate. Um, what a rich feast. And actually, that's my impression for the whole of this evening. It's just been an extraordinary kind of um, set of offerings of, you know, the fruits of people's hard work. And um, yeah, deeply impressive. My question is, which is really more to my fellow councillors, but also to the staff, is, is that I have noted on occasions, some of us, no names uh, mentioned, wondering what uh, we can show for our two years or plus as a new administration and um, feeling perhaps a little bit down in the mouth about just what, what that might look like. But I think this evening just goes to show that there's a huge amount that the, the, the town council is, is facilitating and making happen. And my question really is, well, how can we sort of demonstrate that to as perhaps a a skeptical section of the public who might think that we're not doing anything very much at all. Thank you. How about Rachel answering that? Yeah. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Um, uh, basically, that's all of our work. That's everything that we're trying to do. And as you, uh, as you know, we do it through all of a, a number of, of 
channels and we can never do enough, frankly. It's an increasingly you know, uh, ever, yeah, ever increasing, um, ever increasing workload, frankly, with all this amazing stuff that, that is going on. I actually do think that the town generally get it. And I think that's generally uh, projects that we deliver, such as FIND, are really, really well received. I know that uh, Melody has lots of feedback. And so uh, maybe it's a perception, really, rather than a, an actual uh, lack of delivery. Thank you very much indeed, Rachel. Uh, Maxine, is it? Thank you. Whenever I hear Kate speak, I know why I love Froom and I know why I love being a councillor. Kate, you and your team are just amazing. And Rachel, what you do, you know, to support all of us is also amazing. So it, first of all, it's a really big thank you. Delighted to hear that the Youth Mental Health Forum is up and running because that's where I first met Kate. Um, before I was a councillor, I was on that, and it's really, really excellent to hear that's happening again. My my question um, is, I know you do a lot, but could we have a couple of minutes on what how you include youngsters with additional needs in everything you do? And I know you do a lot, so just could you just tell me a couple of minutes on that? Yes. Now. Um, so we work really close, I mean, as I said, we work really closely with all the other schools and um, in particular, a lot of our work is to, um, and recently has been about how we can support children and young people that are maybe not getting what they might out of the education system for whatever reason. Um, and we've had a really big focus on that with, with the schools. In fact, I've got a meeting on Monday with a number of head teachers. We've worked... Um, consistently throughout for the last four or five years with with Critchill um, who are our local special school but really recognizing that that all of the schools in Froome are inclusive and are supporting a great number of children and young people who are um, they have who disabled children and young people primarily um, so so yeah, there's a there's a breadth, and uh, they are included in everything that we do. In the same way, somebody um, asked me recently how we were talking to um, if we were going to talk to a particular group of young people, and I was like, yes, we're talking to young people. You know, we have we have a real focus, and we're super lucky to have um, a team around us that are really skilled and at going out and making sure that we're that we're always talking and engaging young people across the piece. Um, and we know that there have been particular gaps in the past for disabled children and young people, and that would include children and young people with additional needs um, or a specific um, learning disability. So um, we've, yeah, I guess, I can't say more than, than everything that we're doing and we are absolutely inclusive. Um, there is definitely work to be done and there are some gaps that we're working with the schools to fill in the coming months. Um, particularly that's about working with the county council to make sure that their statutory responsibilities are being delivered locally and that the funding is being deployed in the right places for the right reasons. Thank you very much Kate. Thank you Max. Uh, John. Oh, no, it's just a really quick one to back up what everyone has said. Uh, I think that just seeing the, the things that you spot, the chalk on the pavements, the, the cuttings and all that, the sense of playfulness you see around town, just really fantastic. And it's, it, it's great stuff. Just, just keep up that, that vein. It's so good. Thank you, John. We all agree with that. Um, and finally, Andy, on this subject, please. <clears throat> yeah, thanks, Nick. Uh, thanks, Kate. Again, fantastic presentation. Um, just a quick question. If we as individuals, are, if we come across or I guess forgive the <laughs> forgive the pun, if we were to find a group that, that might qualify as somebody that, or as a group that would be good for find, is it just a case of either contacting you, Melody or Nikki, just to kind of hook you guys up? Yeah. Definitely. If you can contact Nick, um, Melody and link people in with Melody, then she'll be able to ask them all of the right information and, and get them on find. And I guess my final um, thought tonight is 
please, if you have any time to support any of the events that are happening over the, the coming months, then then do let Rachel know because then you'll be part of that army that will be able to share all of this information and talk to the town about the things that we're doing. Um, and that would be really super supportive. Thank you very much, Kate. Um, fantastic work for everyone. Thank you very much. Okay, um, our last item is the ratification of the grants committee decisions. Who's talking to us? Kate again. <laughs> Kate. Oh, it's the twilight slot. Of course it's me. I promise to be quick. Uh, Laura's got a slide for you. Um, this is actually for ratification. Um, so the, uh, we previously agreed at a town matters, maybe a council meeting, that community grants going forward would be uh, discussed, assessed on their merit by the grants advisory group. And then Paul would make the final decisions based on, on that information and their recommendations. So then they come to Town Matters for ratification. So this is a list of the organisations that have been successful in receiving funding. And there are three organisations in this round that we are proposing to write back to and um, ask for more information, um, offer an opportunity for them to have some, some help and support uh, through our programme of support for community organisations um, and welcome them resubmitting their bids in a future round uh, once they've, they've done some work around their organisational structure or provided a bit more information that was missing. So, I, I, Paul, I'm not entirely sure how it works for ratification. Is it, is it a vote? We need to somebody to propose it, I think. So somebody to propose that we go to Sarah and to second. Maxine, and can all those in favour please vote? Come to the screen. Has, have we got anyone who's objecting, please? And any abstentions? That's good, that's unanimous. Fantastic. Um, okay, um, thank you very much indeed. Um, I think that's us. What I wanted to do before we finish is first of all, thank the people who've made this room and this old event actually work so well. I know we've got these panels on the wall, which somebody in the room, I think it was Sarah, who led these, I was actually, we've had gone, Sean, where's Sean gone? Yeah, gone, gone yeah, through his brain. Yeah. We finally got a landscape view of all of all us in here. Thank you for our residents who come along again to spend time here and ask questions and challenge us a bit. Uh, thank you very much for their time. Speakers have been brilliant, great subjects, fantastic work going on. Our next meeting is on the uh, 4th of August, um, hopefully back here at 7 p.m. Thank you very much indeed, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Nick. Thanks, Nick. Oh, thank you. Oh.